Okay guys, we are back and I noticed today that my star fruit had finally come off the plant uh, to touch itself naturally. You can see it's a little bit, uh, it's not the prettiest fruit I've ever produced in the world. It's got plenty of nice flesh on it though. I haven't tried a star fruit since, gosh I must have been a child the last time I tried star fruit. So um, I'm greatly interested to see what this tastes like. We'll try that very shortly. Um, the fact that this plant here has managed to ripen a fruit under grow lights I'm fairly impressed with just in general. It's not a tiny fruit, it's not massive, it's about the size of my hand. So yeah, it's not a massive fruit, it does put on a copious amount of flowers though. It really does kind of enjoy life in the grow tent, this, this plant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this inside, I'm going to give it a bit of a rinse and then we might reconvene with a cutting board. We'll chop off all these kind of brown and wrinkly bits. I don't know if that's because maybe it dried out at some point or maybe I left on the tree too long. I just don't know much about them. I don't even know if you meant to eat the skin. So I'll have a bit quick read about that as well. And we'll come back and see how we go with our very first grow light ripened star fruit. All right, guys, I'm back from outside in the grow tent. I've washed our star fruit here. Gosh, it does look a little bit on the, the dried outside here. I'm wondering if I should have picked it a lot earlier. I just, this star fruit really are not my area of expertise, but after today, I'll be a little bit more knowledgeable about them. So I've rinsed it off and I've had a look. The variety is called Kampangan, I think. I'll put, the, I'll put the label up from dailies over the top of the video so that we can read Kampangan, something like that. Smells very, very sweet. Smells almost sickly sweet. I'm wondering if I left it too long. I think it might be overripe. Um, I read just before I put this video together that we can actually eat the skin of these things. Obviously, we'll chop all the bad bits off. I'll save a little bit for my son to see what he's got to say about it. But let's uh, let's start by chopping in half and just seeing a cross section of this particular plant. Oh, we have a little bit of mold in the center. So. I would say that we definitely left it a bit long. I'm not sure if that camera is going to pick up the kind of mouldy rim in that center there. And I'm, maybe that's the cause for all this rot down here. Maybe this black is actually rotting. Um, and I should have either picked it a long time ago or maybe it's possible that's not mold and it's an insect or something has entered the plant. Now that I've cut it in half, I can see that the base of the plant here, you can see this little almost a bottom like a calyx here um, could have been open for something to enter the plant there and the other side is much the same so right in the center of the core now not knowing much about star fruit i'm not sure if that's where the actual seed would have been normally it almost looks like a seed cavity of about the size and shape of a small uh, a small stone fruit seed like an apricot or something like that i don't know Let's uh, chop some of the good bits off, the small good bits we can salvage, and let's hope that in the future the, uh, the plant is just a little bit, the fruit is a little bit better quality than this particular one. But I mean, today all we're really doing is having a bit of a taste. We can chop those bad bits off, not a problem whatsoever. A small amount of a new fruit is more, is better than a large amount, well, it's better than no. Small amount of a bad, it's good, I'm sure you'll get what I'm trying to say. Here we have a bit of fruit, a small bit of fruit that is unaffected, so I'll give that a go. I'm, I have a feeling that this is overripe. It smells, it smells fermented. It smells like, I don't know if you guys, in the, the coast where I grew up on, in Western Australia, in the Pilbara, we used to have this plant, um, we used to call it a, a mini passion fruit or a wild passion fruit. It had passion fruit about this big. Um, it's a tropical plant and it used to take over. So to grow in the waterways and places like that and it would grow up everywhere. And instead of the kind of large purple passion fruit you would normally see, these would have almost a, um, a kind of a skin covering the fruit, like a webbing sort of uh, to, the, to the fruit from my memory. And you pull that off. And then you have a small passion fruit and you open it up and you have your passion fruit seeds inside. And sometimes when you left them on the plant too long, they would start to ferment and sour. And that's exactly what this smells like. So it smells like one of those. It doesn't smell like your normal passion fruit vine, which I think has a bit more of a distinct um, and unique passion fruity sort of smell. This one smells like that particular plant. 
and it's a plant that I haven't seen of seen in many 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 years because obviously it's it's tropical it can't grow in Canberra and smelling this has immediately brought me back from the days when I'd be a kid and I'd be mucking around in the kind of the, the freshwater lagoons near my property well this is Karatha, so it was several hours away from my property and um, you'd be there you'd be picking off and eating as a kid so that's what it brings me back to but let's give it a shot let's give it a try Okay. It definitely was probably good. The initial the initial taste of that was actually very good. It was a a sweet sour tangy. I could taste the fermentedness to it. This the kind of underlying this fruit is starting to ferment on the plant. This clearly needed to be picked earlier. And then right at the end, I got that that skin and the skin was bitter and it was <laughs> have you ever had that kind of astringency that you get when you eat maybe an unripe persimmon or something like that and it sticks your tongue to your mouth and makes you go a little bit funny had a little bit of that astringency to the skin so as we can see this fruit is far from an ideal specimen so I don't think it's fair to characterize um, this fruit based upon uh, this one experience and maybe now that I've it's fruited once it's going to grow a little bit larger it might fruit again in the future I'm going to give it one more go I'm going to chop everything I'm really going to cull it down just the the center part no skin or anything on that because I think that skin really destroyed it at the end there so this is just a very tiny cross section and that's fine Sweet, sour, slightly fermented. It's not the you wouldn't be very pleased if you went to the market and bought it at a, an expensive price. But it's edible. It's um, it's definitely extremely sweet. I just wish that I'd maybe picked it a little bit earlier. Maybe I shouldn't have been so uh, reluctant to wait to the very very final ripeness stage. It's definitely a plant that I see that has a lot of potential. I can see how that fruit would be delicious. This particular fruit is not. A delicious example of the fruit but I'm not going to rule it out as uh, as being an example for the entire plant so the first star fruit ripened in the grow tent uh, it was interesting it was an interesting experience to say the least and even though this particular fruit wasn't very good I learned a couple of things number one I learned that we can ripen star fruit in a grow tent so if you're out there in a cold environment like I am with you no hope in the world of ripening a star fruit you can do that indoors without a problem you just need the right lights and the right setup pick it at the right time I have learned that it will fruit when it's quite young so this plant is probably it's less than two years old since I've got it. it's probably 12 to 18 months old and it's put on in that time four or five fruit I plucked most of them off some came off by itself and in that time it started putting a lot more growth so it's probably doubled or tripled even in size since when I first had the plant so it grows quite prolifically in the tent and it doesn't mind fruiting I don't know if there's a pollinator in there so it might be setting its fruit naturally I think uh, I think it's a really good one to try if you are trying to grow tropical fruits indoors in particular I think that this star fruit is one that you could give a shot and have a really really good chance of maybe not in the first year and this has only been in the tent six months eight months whatever it is but over a couple of years if you looked after it and gave it space to grow I think you would quite consistently get fruit off it so guys, I'll leave that there. Star fruit, disappointing, but with potential. All right, I'll see you all in the next one.